welcome to Red Dead Art. First things first, subscribe to the channel. Today we're going to show you how to make these super cute juggling chooks. They're also just quite cute as little playthings and um, they look really good if you make them in big and do them as a doorstop. Let's get started straight away. Just so you know, it's also in my book. There we go, Red Ted Art. A great beginner sewing project or a lovely project for you to make for your kids or friends as gifts. What you will need is a piece of fabric, any scrap, scrap fabric will do, which is 20 centimetres by 11 centimetres. The 11 centimetres basically allows it to have a little bit of um, seam allowance, but it's roughly um, two by one. And to be honest, you can make them any size you want. And if you don't have, quite have a piece that size and it's a bit smaller, don't worry about it, you can still make it. You will also need little pieces of felt. So enough for a um, the, the comb and the wattle and a beak. You will need a needle with some thread You'll also need some um, thread later on to make the eyes, but you could also sew on buttons or draw them on or use a piece of felt. And then for stuffing, you'll need a bit of stuffing or cotton wool um, and some rice to give it some weight. So those are the things you need. Now, normally I would make this on the sewing machine, but because we are doing a little video, I thought it'd be easier to show you how easy it is to hand sew. Now you can see my piece of material lining it all up. And I'm going to put, position my features. So you have to put it inside out. So that's going to be the, the wattle, so to speak. Like that. I'm going to put it right to the edge. Not too close because you're going to be sewing here and you don't want to sew it on by accident. Your beak, I'm going to move it over a little bit. Your beak, about here. And then your little wattleys. I'm going to put them together actually. It doesn't matter if they're not aligned, but. In fact, you know what? I'm going to make it stick all stick out a little bit just to make sure it's all in place. There we go. Now, if you are machine sewing, I highly recommend that you pin all this in place. I'm just using some little some needles to pin it. There's one. And I think maybe we'll get away with just one more here. If you're hand sewing it isn't as important but when you're machine sewing things do slip and move out of place a little bit right now you're ready to sew again if you're machine sewing you just go quick up and round so we're going to sew these two sides first um obviously i'm hand sewing so it might take a little while um in fact i'm going to speed this part of the video up so i'm just going to sew along the edge Right, so I've sewn up and across. I've left my thread on because I will need it again. Now comes the moment of truth. Did I position my beak and everything nicely? Okay, push it all through. I think that will do just fine. I could maybe have put this out a little bit further, but to be honest, I think it gives them all a different character. Now, to do the eyes, I do a little French knot. Now if you're not familiar with a French knot you can obviously look now and watch or um, check out my blog. I've got some step-by-step -step photos on how to do it. I'll put a link below and there you can see it. Or of course you can buy the book. So the first thing I'm going to do is do a little knot at the back for the French knot. It is a little bit fiddly. Now you find where you want your eye. I think I want it about there your thread through like that so you push through the needle through you take your needle you wrap it once two three four it does actually where you can do three times not too tight but also not too loose and then you have to push it in and pull this needle through very gently Don't worry, we're going to repeat this again on the other side and you can have another look. There 
we go one French knot now the key thing is is actually I've got a very long piece of thread here you probably want a shorter piece of thread because otherwise it's very easy to get your thread knotted and it's important not to get your thread knotted obviously so you push your eye through and I was doing these French knots with friends uh, recently and they've never used done them before so of course the first couple are a bit tricky so if you've never done a French knot before I recommend just having a go at this um, on a piece of paper fabric separately and just practicing so you put your needle through pull it through you loosely knot wrap it around three or four times a four will obviously be a bigger eye and then you push it right next to where you came through and pull it through very gently and the key thing is that as you're pulling the thread through that you don't knot it and there you have French knot which is like a 3d little um, eye I'm just going to quickly tie this into place here so it doesn't come undone that's just wrapping it around the felt inside and there we go. now as I said if, if you want to see that again either rewind the video or uh, visit my blog with the link below and you can see the step-by-step -step photos and the photos might be helpful because you're a bit more close up Right, you're almost finished with your uh, chicken. So now you take a bit of stuffing. The stuffing goes where the head is, at the top of the head, because you want the weight to be at the bottom, like so. So just literally a little bit of hand, handful. Pour in your rice. It's, it's no, I haven't got an exact figure of how much rice you put in. It's really just a, you know, you feel what feels good to you probably a couple of tablespoons for two or three tablespoons there we go and now here comes the magic bit you're not going to sew it up like this because that would be a flat chicken you want it to sit up so the way you do it is you take that and then you pull the sides apart and then this line should be in the center of the back now I'm going to sew it up and tucking this in like so Create a seam like that. This is where you get that lovely pyramid shape from. Even though you're only draw sewing straight lines, it's really easy. And now you need to sew this shut. Again, you could run the sewing machine over it if you wanted to. I like to just sew it. I kind of pick up the thread, I go inside. And sew it along. So I'm doing quite a reasonably neat closure here. But if you're if this is a first sewing project, I think doing a straight line down the bottom is totally fine, and it will still look cute. One end. I'm just going to run the thread through the chicken so I don't have to cut it off and start again. So I'm just pulling it, I'm just bringing the thread back now so that I can um, sew the other side. But you could just, you know, finish it off at that end, knot it, and then get a new piece of thread. Yeah, so now I'm at the other end. You don't want to be fair. You do want to be fairly neat because obviously you don't want any of the rice falling out. So don't make the stitches too big. We made these a few years ago. They've lasted really well. You can play juggling, catch games, balancing games. You know anything you'd use a little bean bag for use these little chickens instead and I think if you make a set of three they make a lovely little present as well you know to family or, or friends and the door stop so if you do this in large it looks great and my son's got one made out of denim so some old trousers just propping his door up so I'm now knotting off the end of this thread poke it in so Cut it off. 
have your very own little juggling chip. Isn't he adorable? So I hope you enjoyed um, watching how to make this today and that you will have a go at sewing because this is such a great little sewing project. Don't forget to subscribe to Redhead Art and see you here again soon. Bye!